Yes. Um, sort of following up that earlier question about yourself appearing in fiction. Um, many modern authors have intimated that you, for instance, owned a copy of the Necronomicon or had other first-hand knowledge of your mythos. Did you? I did, in fact, have the first copy of the Necronomicon simply because I am in possession of my own brain. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where it was produced, edited, printed, published, all right in here. My own personal Gutenberg behind my very eyes. There is no Necronomicon beyond that. And yes, people have in fact intimated, as you say so politely, that I was merely taking notes from some little book I found in a second-hand store. No, that was mine. It is, of course, inspired by real works of magic, real works from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance as science and, and superstition were coming into conflict, the works of John Dee, of course. All of these books inspired it, but no, there is no Necronomicon, and worst of all, there is no sort of ethereal, penumbral realm that I am actually projecting into to read. No, that is nonsense. It's also very time-consuming. <laughs> Yes? How do you feel about um, the role-playing games where people build their own characters to live in the universe you've created? I, I have definitely heard of this phenomenon, and I don't quite know why one would want to spend much time in my world. I imagine they do not spend much time. <laughs> this, this whole phenomenon, this idea of, of, of putting yourself in the, in the character of a, some small invisible person and playing out adventures, it is truly fascinating. Something we did not quite have in our time. I think H.G. Wells was working on something along those lines, but I really wasn't paying attention. No, it is fascinating and frightening. And in that, I think, there is great potential. 